I welcome you to our Wednesday night prayer, and as I promised in the last video, tonight we would be discussing, or our prayer topic rather, would be our judicial branch of government. Uh, for, your, uh, for your information purposes, if you've ever wondered where our Founding Fathers got the concept of the three branches of government, we can find that in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22, it says, For the Lord is our judge, judicial, the Lord is our lawgiver, legislative, and the Lord is our king, being executive. This is where the concept of our three branches of government came from. And I think that's, that's quite amazing as a Christian that, that, that our documents, so many of our important documents, our founding fathers glean from the scripture in developing documents that would rule this, this nation for, for many years to come. So tonight we want to pray for our judicial branch. When you begin to pray for the judges across the nation, I ask that you not forget our local judges also. The local judges all the way to the highest court in the land, which is our Supreme Court, and remember these judges. And if you don't know them by name, that's fine. We, we just need to be in prayer. And, and, I, and I would ask you at the end of this video, uh, because what I do is try to offer you commentary to maybe, to maybe help you understand and, and how to pray and why the need to pray. But at the end of this video, I ask that, that you do take time and pray as, as all of us will be doing. And then it gives a sense of unity and one accord uh, in, in offering these prayers up. Over the next few months, I'm quite confident that there's going to be several cases that are going to be tried in court, cases that have risen out of this virus of, of what's happened, a lot of these mandates. Uh, in some states where pastors or the laity, the Christians, have been arrested when they seem to follow the social distancing guidelines even we're hearing rumblings right now of as we enter try opening up our our country you're hearing that our president is, is speaking that he has the authority to open our country up uh, mandating it in states while state governors are 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 saying that they actually have the authority to do that we we are probably even going to hear cases of this nature, cases of of, of these these fines of, of people that have not followed the stay-at-home orders. Many, many cases we're probably going to be reading about in the very near future. And because it's so important, because case law is is uh, is a law that is determined in future cases. When a judge rules today, then if there's a similar case, they'll refer back to a previous trial. And that case law has a lot of influence of how it was, how, how it was handled uh, in times past. So, we need judges today that that can adhere to our constitutional law. And when they hear these cases, we need to be praying for them that God would grant them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need in determining the outcome of a lot of these trials that's coming. I hear quite often Christians will make comments to me about why as Christians should we worry or demand our freedoms or our rights. Well, in my opinion, we, we could even see Jesus uh, 
if, if you'll remember, and it was dealing with taxes, but it has more implications than that. Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Uh, and, and I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to go all into that passage, but one that may be a little more familiar to you, we, we find in, in Acts chapter 22, verse 25, Paul is, is the one here, and the Bible says, And when they had bound him, and him being Paul, with thongs, Paul said to this centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned. Because Paul was going before the council there, and Paul at that point invoked his his rights. We we can see this. But let's bring it to the twenty first century. Many times we make statements because we're making them in the world in which we live and sometimes it's hard to differentiate between the world in which we live how much different that that looks from other parts of the world. For example, if you've ever been into some of these countries and, I, and I've gone mission trips on occasion and one particular country I was landing in, I was told that once I exited the plane that I should be very careful. Actually, they actually told me I should not even get my Bible out for any public viewing. Or another country in a state in this country that before you can be baptized you have to go before the local authorities and allow them to interrogate you on why you're being baptized and if you are baptized without the official ruling or or the approval of the local official then you could be subject to five years in prison or another group that I'm very familiar with and they go to areas in their country and they they pray and they'll walk through these these cities and these towns villages and many times when we think about praying with the group we would stop bow our head join hands and maybe someone would pray aloud maybe everyone would pray aloud but in this instance, you don't stop, you don't join hands, you don't bow your head, you don't even close your eyes. You walk while silently you are praying for this area that, that you've chosen to pray for this day. We have a lot of rights and freedoms here in America and obviously that we're going to pray regardless if we have the liberty or the freedom to do that. But I will tell you it's going to be much easier to be able to pray without worrying that you're going to be persecuted, fined, or put in jail. You may think that we should not worry or even be concerned about our religious liberties. You probably are saying that because you have them. Countries all over the world that do not have those religious liberties, Christians are praying. And again, if we lose that liberty in America, we will continue to pray, no doubt about that. But why not ask God, or why not pray and ask God today to help us to keep these rights and not be forced to having to pray silently? 
I will tell you we've lost enough of our rights to pray in government buildings and schools etc and look where that has gotten us so today I ask that you join with me in prayer praying for our judges in my opinion during this crisis we've given an inch to our government leaders and they've taken a mile and we could see devastating outcomes from this through court cases that are already being tried in some parts of the country but that will assured be tried in the few weeks and months ahead. I believe that in America we could be at a crossroads and where we are standing today. And in this crossroads we will either continue to enjoy our religious liberties or we could start seeing them taken away dramatically. The time to pray is not in the middle of a storm. The time to pray is before the storm. Many times God gives us enough common sense and insight that we can see these things coming and we start preparing now. Well, I'm asking you today to take just a few moments and to pray for our judges that they will rule correctly, they will rule constitutionally, and that we may continue to enjoy not only our rights as a citizen, but even our religious freedoms and rights, where we can continue to take the gospel all across this nation and the world without worry of persecution. May God bless you. May God bless America.